Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to another video with the Electrical Guide. Today, I want to show you how to calculate a simple parallel circuit. So, as usual, I have my three rules here for parallel circuits. Voltage total on each parallel circuit is the same as the applied voltage. So here we have some parallel branches, which means they must have the same voltage as the applied. Current total is found by adding the current sum of each branch. So each branch total current will add up and give you a current total. And the resistance total is found by adding the sum of each of the resistances inverse. So that means one over resistance. And I'll show you how that works as well. Of course, I have my log here on the left. Very important to log all of our values here. I've preloaded in all the values we were given just to save some time. And I have my Ohm's law formulas in the bottom left here that I will be using for this circuit. I also have my power formula here, which is also Ohm's law, just to do our power values at the end as well. So let's get started. Step one here is usually getting the resistance total. We were given all of our resistances so we can find that total. And the formula looks just like this. So with our values in, it'll look like this. And I'm going to quickly punch that into my calculator. Now we can actually do this whole thing on the same line if we're using a scientific calculator. So I'm going to show you exactly what that's going to look like with my calculator right here. So let's just speed that up. And that's going to give us a resistance total of 2.3017 ohms. And I'm including four decimal places here as the standard I like to use. And we're leaving off the rest of these decimal places. So you can see how I punched that in my calculator right here in one clean line, and it came out with our answer. Now that we have our resistance total, we should put it into our chart. And we can move on now and close out our totals by using Ohm's law, I equals V over R to get our I total. That's going to give us an I total of 5.2135 amps. And of course, we want to right away put that into our chart every time. Okay, now that we've found our total values here, what rules can we apply so that we can get two variables in the rest of our circuit here? Because we only need two variables to solve for the third one, right? So if we can find a rule in our rules here that lets us take one of these values we've already found, we should do that. So here our voltage is the same in each branch. Now these branches are nice and clean. They only have one resistor each, which means this resistor must have a voltage that's the same as the applied. And if our applied voltage is 12, then each voltage across R1, R2, R3, and R4 must also be 12. So I'm just going to quickly speed up and add that into our chart. All right, now it's as simple as that. We don't even have to look at the drawing anymore, and we have two values to use for the rest of our circuit. We can solve for current for I1, I2, I3, and I4, all by using Ohm's law, V over R, which is what we just did to find our total. So I'm going to speed up again, and we're going to process those. OK, and now we have all of our current values across our resistors. And we can actually verify this very easily by just adding them all up as per our current total is found by adding the current sum of each branch. We can add up each branch current and we should get 5.2135. So let's just go ahead and double check that our currents do indeed equal our total. Okay, and what we're getting is 5.2133. And we have 5.2135, which means we are good to an accuracy of 0.0002 which is really close. Now, had we included the many more threes that were in our calculator for I4, we could have included those in our addition here, and it would have given us just this extra little bit into our I total. But we don't want to use every single decimal place, so I usually just go with four. And here, 
we've also got 4 to an accuracy of 0 0.002. So I would say yes, all of our current values are correct, and it does equal our I total. Now I'm going to quickly process through our power values as well, all four of them here plus the total, and I'm going to speed that up, and then I'm going to show you what we can do with those values moving forward. Okay, now we have all of our power values. Now, just quickly, we can verify even more accurately that everything in our entire chart here is correct by using our power values that we found by multiplying our voltage by our current for each resistor, which means we have to use our voltage and current for each resistor to get our total power. So if we add all these power values up from resistors one through four, it should give us our power total. And that will indeed confirm that every voltage and every current value we used for each resistor must therefore also be correct. So I'm gonna quickly add up our power values and just verify that they do indeed reach 65.562 when added up. So let's speed that up and see how that turns out. Okay, when we add those up, we get 62.5596. Our total was 65.562. So that gives us an accuracy of 0 0.01. This is how close we are. Now, obviously, we're always going to have a little bit of a difference if we're only using four decimal places in our answers, right? But I think with an accuracy this close, that proves to us that every voltage and current value we use to find our power values must have been correct if we therefore found our power totals were the same. And remember, we found this power total by using our voltage total and our current total from the beginning. So we didn't even know what our power values were then. So this checks out. So I hope you've learned today how to solve a very simple parallel circuit. Thanks for watching another video with the electrical guide. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much.